Sail into the deep and let down your net. The Golden Peninsula, full of long history, is abundant with natural resources. Fish in water and rice on land, being varied in culture, ethnicity, religious liberty with the king as upholder of all religions. And here is Thailand. 350 years of establishment of the mission of Siam. It is recorded in the historical event that the Portuguese Dominican missionaries put their first steps on the soil of Siam about 450 years ago. But the tangible progress was seen during the 17th century through the MEP missionaries, with the effect that the Siamese mission was officially established on the 4th of July 1669 and the evangelization work was making progress step by step, especially on the field of education, healthcare and social works. As of now, the Center of Catholic Administration is located at the Catholic Bishops Conference of Thailand with the four main Episcopal Commissions as follows. Episcopal Commission for Pastoral Care of the Christian this Episcopal Commission covers the commissions of liturgy, arts and holy places, Christian formation, priests and consecrated life, and laity. Episcopal Commission for Missionary Work and Catholic Education. It covers interreligious dialogue, heritage, culture and education in the name of the Catholic Education Council of Thailand. Episcopal Commission for Social Work or Caritas Thailand. It covers development and social pastoral care, health care, ethnic groups, prisoners and refugees. Episcopal Commission for Social Communications under the name Catholic Social Communications of Thailand. It is the office in charge of social communications of the church through multimedia according to the time, example, print, radio, television, and other social media. Its function is also to provide media education with the knowledge and skills to understand and manage the media. The Catholic Church in Thailand is divided into 10 dioceses, Archdiocese of Bangkok, Archdiocese of Tara and Ong Sang, Diocese of Chiang Mai, Jantaburi, Ratchaburi, Udon Thani, Udon Lachatani, Nakon Lachasima, Nakon Sowan, and Suratani. It is with great joy that on the 25th of April 2018, the Holy See announced the creation of the new Diocese of Chiang Rai as the 11th Diocese for the Catholic Church in Thailand and appointed as the first bishop, Most Reverend Joseph Vutilert Herlom. At present, Archbishop Paul Chang Inam is the Apostolic Nuncio to Thailand. The service of love and serve of the Catholic Church in Thailand is evident, concrete and acceptable to every social sector, including being in good relationship with the Thai royal dynasty. When His Majesty King Rama IX and Her Majesty went to Europe, they went to have audience with Pope at the Vatican Palace. And later in turn, Pope John Paul II made the apostolic visit to Thailand and had an audience with His Majesty and the royal family at the Royal Grand Palace. This is a great blessing to the Catholic Church in Thailand. Besides, the Catholic Church in Thailand has positively responded to the Second Vatican Council with regards to Nostra Aetate, 
i.e. relationship with religions of other faiths through Inter-Religious Dialogue Commission, which works closely with the Religious Affairs Department of the Government, Ministry of Culture, especially on the important government ceremonies. It is the divine gift of God who provides this church with two cardinals, namely Cardinal Michael Michagitbunchu and Cardinal Francis Xavier Griangsak Gowitwanit. Thai society also acknowledges the quality and standard of the Catholic education, since more than 300 Catholic schools in Thailand have sown good educational seeds with the effect that alumni from these education institutes are known to be equipped with both knowledge and morality as one can see that so many outstanding individuals have graduated from the institutes under the Catholic Education Council of Thailand. Further, we also provide ongoing formation for the school administrators, teachers and personnel for the holistic values of the gospel, vis-a-vis -vis education of various subjects. Currently, we have over 300 schools, three colleges, and two universities. Nonetheless, the majority of Thai people still lack the opportunity of living a good life in society. Therefore, the Episcopal Commission for Social Works under the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Thailand has organized responding offices in every dimension to encounter with the problems, such as providing literacy, disadvantaged children and the ethnic groups, including providing assistance to the refugees, the sick, the elderly through the Commission for Social Development, hospitals and various home cares in every geographical area without discrimination to nationality and religious affiliation. The new evangelization, together with new instruments for proclaiming the good news is carried out through various social communications in accordance to our time by stressing on love, gospel values, universal and local news of the church, print media, especially Udon San weekly and monthly magazine, which has coexisted for more than a century with the Thai society, online media through radio and Catholic television programs, which are acceptable at the international level particularly through cooperation with Asian countries, enabling the good news to be proclaimed more extensively and bringing good results to society, both at the international and local spectrum. Through proclaiming the good news, preaching in the liturgical functions, catechism, formation in faith and being witnesses of the bishops, priests, male and female religious and all the evangelizers in the Catholic Church of Thailand has concretely become life witnesses by having nine blessed martyrs. In a suited time, God grants Siam, a very far east land, to bear fruits from the seeds of the missionaries' hard work. The Thai King's cordiality and the generosity of people in this land. Siam is officially announced to be a land of the 350 years anniversary for evangelization in 2019. This is the period that reveals God's will. This is the period that tells us that a good soil will give good fruits. The seeds will grow and have deep roots in the lands. The 350 year anniversary of the founding of the Siam Diocese is an occasion of gratefulness for missionaries to the church in Thailand. As St. John Paul II said, let us remember the past with gratitude. We are also grateful for the precious heritage of the Assumption Cathedral, which began as a small church and grew with people's donations. 
the cathedral was born at the centre of the city and celebrates its 100th anniversary. Catholic and Thai society is bound together. They have both journeyed and supported peace. In the occasion of passing through the new reign of the King Rama X on the 6th of May 2019, Cardinal Francis Xavier Krungsak Govitvanit, the Archbishop of Bangkok Archdiocese and the President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Thailand, and other three bishops paid congratulations to His Majesty, King Rama X and Queen Rama X, in the occasion of the Royal Coronation Ceremony. In the occasion of the Royal Coronation Ceremony at the Pratinang Sitaisawan Prasat, the Grand Palace, in remembrance of gratitude for all the Thai King's royal graces that have always remained in Thai Catholics' hearts until now. As a church, we reflect on propagating the mandate of Christ, more so here in Asia, and this mantle has fallen on the Federation of Asian Bishops' Conferences. The FAPC is a voluntary association of Episcopal Conferences in Asia, established by the approval of the Holy See. Its purpose is to foster among its members solidarity and co-responsibility for the welfare of the church and society in Asia. 2020 marked the 50th anniversary of the FABC, but the unfortunate situation of the pandemic shelved all plans. So let's take a trip down memory lane and relive these moments, not only as a historical event, but also renewing the FABC with the spirit of the founders. The roots of the FABC go back to the Second Vatican Council. It was during the sessions of the Council in Rome that many Asian bishops met for the first time. Most of them realized that until then, they had better relationships with bishops from Europe than with their fellow bishops from Asia. This realization created the need for a structure aimed towards interaction and cooperation among themselves across Asia. Thus, the FABC is the fulfillment of this long-standing dream of the bishops of Asia. In 1970, on the occasion of Pope Paul VI's visit to Manila, 180 Asian bishops came together for the first Asian bishops meeting from 23rd to 29th November 1970. The latter part of this meeting was presided over by the Pope himself and it was here the FABC was born. Later in 1971, 
the Asian bishops assembled in Hong Kong for the first Central Committee meeting in March to pursue a permanent Asian Episcopal structure. On 16th November, the second draft of the statutes was approved at Experimentum for two years by Pope St. Paul VI, the moment when Rome officially recognized the FABC. A third meeting of the Central Committee was convened in Hong Kong between 13th and 15th February 1973. It was the first FABC meeting under the provisionally approved statutes. Over the years, there have been significant contributions to the Universal Church from the Church in Asia. Today we look at the human panorama of Asia, the immense field of our apostolate echoed in the phrase, for all the peoples of Asia. That has been a pledge of the FABC. We grapple with the diversity of Asia, yet we are brought together to be the Asian Church. In 1970, on the occasion of Pope Paul VI's visit to Manila, the Asian bishops came together for the first time. From that meeting flowed the desire to strengthen the bonds of friendship amongst them and to provide an opportunity to define and articulate what it means to be church in Asia in the spirit of Vatican II. This then gave birth to the Federation of the Asian Bishops Conference, or the FABC. The year 2020 marked the 50th anniversary of this significant moment, and 2022 marks the 50th year that the Federation of the Asian Bishops Conference was officially constituted. The logo of the 50th anniversary of the FABC General Conference strives to bring forth the direction that the Church will make together as a people of Asia in the coming years. The logo attempts to affirm and celebrate the journey of the FABC over the past 50 years, seen in the number 50. It attempts to create an awareness of the emerging realities and challenges confronting Asia and the Church, as seen in the wave signals in the five of the 50. The cross of the FABC portrays a renewed commitment in our search for the face of Jesus in Asia. And the new pathway of service with the people of Asia is based on the scripture as the Magi went by a different way and is depicted by the anti-clockwise movement. The biblical framework of the logo flows from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. As the FABC celebrates 50 years of its existence, it desires to follow Jesus more faithfully in our times. The Gospel passage chosen forms an integral part of the infancy narratives and grounds this desire for renewal. The wise men came to Jerusalem from the east, where is the infant king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we've come to do him homage. The general conference begins with honoring the journey and the stars that have guided our path over the past 50 years. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed and so was the whole of Jerusalem. This verse invites the Church of Asia to reflect on what troubles us as we dwell into the emerging realities in Asia. And falling to their knees, they did him homage. Amid the emerging realities, we need to keep our focus on the person of Christ, who leads us to steer the church through the different challenges confronting the people of Asia. They departed for their own country by another way. The challenges of Asia require the church, while remaining faithful to Christ, to find its own path. Today, as we look back at the journey of the FABC and what has transpired throughout the ages, we are strengthened in a resolve to be the face of Jesus in a broken world.
the Federation of the Asian Bishops Conference has evolved in the past 50 years since its inception in 1970. To journey together as people of Asia, the FABC has devised structures and offices. These combined oil the wheels of the organization's functions. So how does the FABC operate? Well, it has an elaborate hierarchy of structures comprising of the plenary assembly, the central committee, standing committee, the central secretariat and various offices and desks. Let's start with the plenary assembly, which is the supreme body of the FABC. The plenary assembly consists of all presidents of member conferences, bishop delegates elected by the member conferences and all associate members. Every committee, office and office bearer reports to the plenary assembly, which meets in ordinary sessions once in four years. The next in line is the central committee. All presidents of the member conferences are part of the central committee whose role is to oversee the implementations of the resolutions and instructions of the plenary assembly. Unlike the plenary assembly, the central committee meets annually. The central committee elects the president, vice president and the secretary general of the FABC who together form the leadership team of the Episcopal body. All activities within the FABC are directed by the Central Committee, including approval of appointments, initiation and closure of offices, and provisions for their terms of reference. We now move to the Standing Committee of the FABC, comprising of five bishops, elected from different regions of Asia together with the leadership team. The Standing Committee implements the resolutions and instructions of the Central Committee. However, this hasn't been functional in the past number of years. The fourth important link to the FABC structure is the Central Secretariat, the principal service agency and an instrument of coordination within the FABC and external offices and agencies. The Central Secretariat works under the Secretary General and the Assistant Secretary General. Let's now proceed to the bottom of the pyramid that includes all offices and desks of the FABC. Specialized service agencies operating under the guidance of the Central Committee and the assistance of the Central Secretariat. Office consists of the Bishop, who is a Chairman, and two to four member Bishops. Each office has an Executive Secretary. There are exceptions. Some offices may appoint an additional Secretary for a desk. The work carried out in the offices of the FABC is voluntary and may or may not conform to a physical working space. FABC offices that have a working space are not necessarily situated in any one location. At present, there are nine offices of the FABC. They are the Office of Evangelization, the Office of Theological Concerns, the Office of Ecumenical and Interreligious Affairs, the Office of Human Development and the Climate Change Desk, the Office of Social Communications, the Office of Education and Faith Formation, the Office of Laity and Family, which is further subdivided into ASPA Beck Desk, Women's Desk, Youth Desk, Office of Clergy, Office of Consecrated Life. These structures and offices form an integral part of the FABC and ensures and strengthens the bonds among the bishops and the churches in Asia, bringing the good news for all the people of Asia.
into your latest project uh, for the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences, uh, the 50th anniversary celebration. Now you wrote the theme song. Tell us a little bit about about this song. This theme is quite, uh, in a way, uh, it's, it's my first time that uh, I encountered. Uh, I saw his star rising. No? So it's Christmas Eve. No? It's it's a celebration of, uh, of course, the 50 years of FADC. And then uh, I I read it's a, it, it, they release a, a 49 page document, if I'm not mistaken, about the history of FADC. And of course, it's very very uh, colorful with the many also with the many things that uh, the church in Asia would be facing. And so I I asked uh, the one who contacted me. I think it's Father Bill, and I asked him to ask questions. Uh, I, I have certain questions as to how should the Church of Asia uh, move forward you know, in this period. You know? Of course, it's not simply looking back at the 50 years, but it is looking forward to the mission of the Catholic Church in Asia. And then uh, yeah, Father Bill was saying, uh, of course, we want something to to sound like a prayer, you know? but then the challenge is how to make it also appealing to the youth. So what I did was I combined both challenges together. You know? So it would sound like a prayer in the beginning, then it would uh, go somewhere else in the middle. You know? I, I, my favorite term is it would go Bollywood in the middle. <laughs> That's how the song would go, and I challenged uh, the, the arranger, my friend, who's so good in, with uh, arranging music, to incorporate uh, Asian music, uh, Asian instruments, rather Asian instrument. And surprisingly, it was song almost by one person because it's pandemic. I was thinking of the one of the best groups uh, in uh, in Manila, the Paspala, the Jesuit group, no. But there were problems with the recording because of uh, certain restrictions in the studio. Then I asked my most talented and favorite singer, who is not so well known, and she did everything, you know, with one uh, companion to sing the male voices, Jingle Buena, and she did uh, so much to this song. So it's uh, it will be a big surprise, and uh, I think it's one of the most beautiful songs I've written in my lifetime. <laughs> It's an, music is an expression of love, love from God and love, our love to God. You know? So we, it, music helps us to, to love more. That's it. Suddenly shining a 
สามพรานนครปฐมในวันนี้การพิธีการจะดำเนินรายการเป็นภาษาอังกฤษครับ Your Eminence Your Excellencies Brothers and Sisters in Christ and the audience at home My name is Christopher a p i c h a t in Tarawisit and I will be serving as the host of this celebration We now celebrate the 50th FABC General Conference Journey together as peoples of Asia. We are here at the shrine of the Blessed Nicholas b u n g e r t k i t b a m r u n g n a k o n p a t h o m Kingdom of Thailand. As we are entering into the ceremony, all of you might have noticed the logo of this conference, and of course, the logo marks 50th FABC General Conference with the word "Journeying Together" at. Peoples of Asia, the 50th represent the year 50 years. Then we have the awareness, and we have the picture of the continent of Asia. Together, we also implies the search of the face of Jesus Christ on the pathway, on the different ways, which is on the anti-clockwise direction, and that goes with. And then went a different way, Matthew chapter 2, clause 12. In about uh, two minutes' time, we're going to bring you into the opening ceremony. The Federation of Asian Bishops Conference was conceived in 1970, when 180 Roman Catholic bishops of Asia gathered at the meeting in Manila for a week, and Saint Paul the Sixth. Since Pope Paul VI was present for the latter part of that meeting, it was at that meeting when the 180 bishops approved that there would be a permanent structure for the Episcopal Conference of Asia. Today, at the shrine of the Blessed Nicholas b u n g e r t k i t b a m r u n g we come together for the 50th inauguration to recall, to remember the beginnings, not only as a historical event of the past. But also, in order to renew the FABC with the spirit of the founders, with gratitude for the past, we set out to begin again in our time and into the future, with that same enthusiasm for the Asian bishops to collegially communicate, cooperate, and collaborate on being church in Asia, and we are committed ourselves. For journeying together as peoples of Asia, Your Eminence, ladies and gentlemen, we now begin the inauguration of FABC 50th anniversary with the opening bells, followed by the hymn "Veni Creator Spiritus" for the procession of the bishops. Please rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Now the Cardinal Mongbo, the president of FABC, will give <clears throat> inaugural speech about the birth of FABC and milestone of ABC for Asia. Please be seated. Dear brothers, sisters, greetings in the name of the Lord. Today the history beckons us after half a century of an Asian journey of grace and gratefulness, the Asian Church gather great joy today to inaugurate the 50th year celebrations of FABC. The conference will be held from 12th to 30th of October. I wish all of you the great feast of the Feast of Mary, other, our mother and queen. It is apt that my words of upholding grace and gratefulness comes with the Magnificat of Mary, with whom the Asian church can sing, the Lord has done marvels for me. 50 years ago, the Asian bishops came together with a great Pentecostal moment provided by the Second Vatican Council to establish the Federation of Asian Bishop Conferences, FABC. It is set upon to respond to the creative apostolic impulses provoked by the Second Council set the world on fire for renewal. The Asian Church celebrates this juncture of grace and gratefulness all praises to God the Almighty, who has guided this church through all these years. Asia is the creator of many religions. In his great journey to the Asian church, St. Pope John Paul II extolled the vital role of Asia in the salvation history. In his apostolic exaltation, Ecclesia in Asia, the Pope said, the church in Asia sings the praises of the God of salvation for choosing to initiate his saving plan on Asian soil through men and women of that continent. It was in fact in Asia that God revealed and fulfilled his saving purpose from the beginning. He guided the patriarchs and called Moses to lead his people to freedom. He spoke to his chosen people through many prophets, judges, kings, and valiant women of faith. In the fullness of time, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ the Savior, who took flesh as a nation, exalting in the goodness of the continent's peoples cultures and religious vitality, and conscious at the same time of the unique gift of faith which she has received for the good of all, the church in Asia cannot cease to proclaim, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love endures forever. Yes, all glory to God who chose this continent for their sanctified salvation history. The saintly Pope left a mandate to the Asian Church to continue that uh, and live up vibrantly that uh, reality. Inspired by the saintly Pope's wisdom, the Federation of Asia Bishop Conferences coordinated the missionary endeavors of the Asian Church. It has been a long and challenging journey. This long journey has given the Asian Church a vibrant identity, constantly challenging us to be a missionary church. It continues. 
Now, in the Asian church and the FABC stands at the crossroads of a very challenging epoch, much has been achieved. We are grateful to all those who shepherded that process. We are grateful to the theologians and others who provided the intellectual identity to FABC. Asia is a virtual mosaic of cultures. The church reflected that diversity. The co in cooperation of the cultural and religious is what theologians refer to as inculturation. Asian Christianity is in the midst of this process of shedding its alien baggage and becoming truly indigenous to the region. With the creativity, FABC fortified the Asian threefold dialogue with cultures, religions, and the poor of Asia. FABC envisaged envisage a coordinating structure with empowering commissions. Grace has led us so far. Today, the church and the world stand at the crossroads of history. We gather amidst suffocating clouds of conflict and displacements, collapse of the economy, frightening climate change, pandemic, and starvation of millions. Secularism is on the ascendancy in the traditional Christian world. Authoritarian leadership is becoming norm in many countries. Democracy faces stiff challenges. Fundamentalism and religious violence threaten global peace. We are called upon to examine ourselves what could be the role of Asian churches in these challenging moments. How can Asian churches become prophets of peace in an increasingly anxious world? The third millennium brings great challenges. Pope Francis has always encouraged to look at every challenge as an opportunity. As we inaugurate the 500 year celebration, we are reminded that the biblical perspective of Jubilee mandates a comprehensive change and a robust renewal. The church under the present Pope has proactively initiating changes. We are challenged to be synodal church with evangelization gaining the prime place in Vatican structure and mission. On the justice front, the Pope has called us our dedication to struggle for environmental and economic justice. Pope has called for a life built on right relationships. His three documents have given to Asia Church and the world a map road in the right relationships. Evangelii Gaudium guided us in our relationship with God. Laudato Si charted a course in our relationship with God's creation. And Fratelli Tutti enlightened us on the relationship with one another. The FABC conference has reflected on these and other needs and challenges and themes will be discussed. As we enter into these deliberations, we are becoming aware of the call of the gospel to become active missionaries. The mission of the Asian church is already charted out in the book of Revelation. Asia was the soil on which the great mission of evangelization started. What is the Lord's call to the Asian church? With Christianity playing an important role in Asian nations, education, health, and human development, countries are becoming economically, politically more confident. The church is vibrant in Asia and Africa with increasing vocations. This is a great opportunity and challenge. With prayer and planning and commitment, 
this century can become the Asian Christian century, proclaiming the good news and fostering peace and justice in the world. The FABC conference will address many of these concerns. We can look to our preparation of the FABC 50 General Conference as the work of the Holy Spirit. I commend to all the dioceses for their preparations. The diocesan and the conference phase of the synagogue process ended last uh, August 15. The October FABC 50 General Conference will collate all the deliberations and chart a new course of journey for Asia and the world. The theme chosen for the conference is FABC 50, journeying together as the peoples of Asia, and they went a different way. Matthew chapter 2, 12. It looked like a slightly contradictory. The elderly church journeyed together in Christ's mission, but the diverse gifts of the early church helped them to reach various cultures and nations. <coughs> Asia is the biggest continent with 60% of the population, compromising 48 countries, need both unity and diversity. I wish all the people of Asia a great blessing as we undertake this journey. Let the Lord, who promised prophets faithful accompaniment, walk with his. With his providence, Asia Church will see great wonders. God bless all our efforts. Next, let us all listen to the Word of God from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, 1 to 12. The Gospel will be read by the four representatives from four regions of Asia. South Asia, represented by India. Southeast Asia, represented by the Philippines. East Asia, represented by Japan. And Central Asia, represented by Thai. Please rise for Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea, during the reign of King Herod, suddenly some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east, asking, Where is the infant King of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed, and so was the whole of Jerusalem.
he called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people and inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him at Bethlehem in Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, and you Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means the last among the leaders of Judah. For from you will come to leader who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise man to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared and sent them on to Bethlehem with these words, go and find out all about the child. And when you have found him, let me know so that I too may go and do him homage. Having listened to what the king had to say, they set out. And suddenly, the star they saw rising went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight. And going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling to their knees, they did him homage. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gift of gold and fang incense and myrrh. But they were given warning in a dream not to go back to Herod and return to their own country by a different way. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be, please be seated to take a silence moment to reflect and to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit from the Word of God. It is now time for reflection together. May I usher all of us here to listen to the reflection from Sister Rekha Shatnuta Shatnatu through online inaugural function, the VCR.
Reflections on Matthew 2 and FABC 50. The journey of the Magi enlightens our re-reading of the experience of FABC, enriches our reflections as we celebrate its golden jubilee, and enhances our vision for its future journey. The story of the wise men is indeed a faith journey for every disciple of Jesus. It is all about discipleship and can be applied to the journey of the Asian church in general and that of FBC in particular. Although many insights can be gleaned from the story, I shall dwell on just a few aspects of this discipleship journey. Then I shall focus on the final response of the Magi. They went by another way. Verse 12b. The narrative presents discipleship as a journey that encompasses a process of seeing, recognizing and responding to the signs of God. This is what the wise men did. They saw a star in a distant land. They recognized it as a sign from God and they responded to it by setting out on a long journey to find and worship the king that the star had indicated. It is very striking that they immediately acted on the sign rather than merely looking at it. Since the wise men represent the world, their coming to Jesus represents the breaking down of the walls between races and cultures. We can also say that the Magi make a synodal journey. They discern together, decided together, and journeyed together. This journey certainly entailed immense difficulties for the Magi, but it also brought the immense joy of arriving at their destination. Despite all the hardships they had to endure, the Magi had not given up. They had not stopped trusting in their guiding star. They had found their way to the birthplace of the newborn king of the Jews. Like the merchant in search of the fine pearls in chapter 13, or the women at the tomb on Easter morning in chapter 28, the wise men were overwhelmed with joy. Chapter 2, verse 10. This journey was a response to divine initiatives and interventions. As the saying goes, God's grace precedes human actions. The Magi are inspired to seek and to discern. They are guided by the star of God at the beginning and later they are led by God through a dream to return to their own country by a different route. The dream motif, like the star motif, portrays God who is not mentioned in the story but is active throughout. Listening to God's instructions, they dared to disobey King Herod and went by another way which implied great risk. Now, what does this gospel mean for us today? The story of the Magi invites the Asian church to see, to recognize and to respond to the interventions of God. In this context, we may ask ourselves, when and where do we experience interventions of God? God speaks to us through the various events of our daily life. So, what is God's message in and through the global experience of the coronavirus pandemic? What is God's instruction as the church is called to make a synodal journey? What is God's dream when FABC celebrates its golden jubilee? The pandemic more than ever before reminds us of our interconnectedness and interdependence as members of the human family. Pope Francis, by convoking the synod and synodality, invites us to be a listening church, 
to make a radical shift in our mindset so that we become more attentive, more inclusive and journey together. The Jubilee year of FABC offers a golden opportunity for us to enter into a process of renewal. Lastly, how do we understand verse 12b? And they went by another way. In the light of the above analysis, it is reasonable to say that the Asian church is challenged to explore new pathways for its journey forward. The story of the Magi invites us to consider the pandemic, the synod and the jubilee as God's interventions and challenges us to take new ways to journey on different paths, to allow the church to unfold in new and even more authentic and holier ways. Perhaps it is a call to embrace a new way of being the Asian church. God calls the church to continual renewal. Are we called to become more contemplative and interdependent? More synodal and inclusive? A more ascetic and prophetic church? God invites us to become fully and truly an Asian church by listening to Asian realities and embracing Asian spirituality. We are called to journey together as peoples of Asia into the unknown at the service of God's mission of announcing the gospel of Jesus Christ guided by the Holy Spirit. I imagine that the new face of the Asian church will reflect a church with a rich interior life and contemplative spirituality marked by simplicity and an ever-widening family spirit. She will foster transformative listening and reciprocal service, openness to newness and change. The Asian Church will be truly committed to proclaiming God's kingdom of justice, peace and the integrity of creation. She will be a church that respects the dignity of every human person, cares for the sick and elderly, gives laity and women their rightful place, gives special attention to families and young people. At home with her own vulnerability, she will celebrate the diversity of life and dare to take risks while striving to maintain harmony and peace. I hope our church will journey forward, overcoming poverty, loneliness and marginalization, building together a community where the multi-religious and multicultural Asian world will know we are Christians because we care for each other and love one another. In Asian soil, the church then becomes a symbol of God's reigning presence, radiating joy and hope amid persecutions a sign of God's transforming presence pervaded by integrity and holiness. Let me conclude by praying with the psalmist. Make us know your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. And may we let the Holy Spirit guide our journey forward. Next, we would like to invite you to listen to Cardinal Oswald Anthony Angelo Grazias, the Archbishop of Bombay and convener of FABC 50th, to speak on FABC 50th anniversary. Your remnants. Your eminences, my dear brother bishops, my dear fathers and sisters, and my dearest people of Asia. Very warm greetings to you 
on this auspicious day, the feast of the Queenship of Mary. A short while ago, the president of the FABC, Cardinal Bo, took us through the birth of the FABC and its milestones. May I now look to the future. Half a century has passed. We at the FABC, together with all of you, the peoples of Asia, are embarking on a new journey with the FABC 50 General Conference. Inspired by the scripture text just proclaimed at our FABC, we will start a monumental task of reaffirming, renewing, and revitalizing the church in Asia. We will gather at FABC 50 to commemorate, celebrate, and chart the direction that we as church in Asia will take on our journey together in the next decades. Open to the spirit, we go by another way as he, the Holy Spirit, leads us. FABC 50, to begin with, will affirm and celebrate our journey thus far. The FABC 50, the FABC, was founded in response to the particular needs and challenges of the Asian church of 50 years ago. We wanted a church of the poor, of the young, and of dialogue, a church for the poor, for the young, and for dialogue. This goal remains relevant even today. But there have been so many big changes and so many new challenges for us in Asia. Hopefully, we are just exiting the COVID-19 pandemic. But we have new socio-political and economic tensions, a deepening migrant and climate crisis, and so on. The first few days of FABC will be spent in visiting Asia, in getting to know about the situation in different countries, and deliberating on emerging realities. These challenges and these realities may well disturb us, but brothers and sisters, they will not surprise us because we live with them. Then we turn once again to God and search for the face of Jesus in Asia. We will seek the face of Jesus that is among each one of us, despite our diversity, Strengthened by this encounter with Jesus, FABC 50 will try to trace a new vision for the church in Asia. As church, we do not exist for ourselves, but we are at the service of all the peoples of Asia as we continue to build up the kingdom of God. Our responses to the challenges of today must be well discerned, grounded in scripture, tradition, and magisterial teaching. We need a pastoral practice that promotes unity and sustainability in order to transform our realities in the prayer and power of the Holy Spirit. We have therefore dedicated the next few days of the FABC 50 to workshops and plenary sessions on church documents and characteristics of the church in Asia so that we became and we remain a prophetic, relevant, and responsive church. We discern, brothers and sisters, the role of the church for a better Asia. With this, we come to the theme of the FABC 50, journeying together as peoples of Asia. We seek out new pathways of service and more appropriate and more effective structures. At FABC 50, we will do this in synodality, in communion with the peoples of Asia, with the participation of 250 bishops, priests, religious and lay persons, and with our mission of a renewed and shared evangelical outreach. 
thanks to your participation at the several consultations in preparation for our general conference these past couple of years, we already have some initial salient points for consideration. An expansion of the triple dialogue of the FABC, a better support for the bishops and indeed all church leaders to be, <coughs> as Pope Francis stated, apostles of listening. We need partnerships, better communication, better organizational structures, and so on. This we will discuss in the last week of our conference. My dear people, it is our desire that through FABC 50, we will revitalize ourselves, the church in Asia, in service to the people of Asia, both at the general conference and beyond. We will seek a renewed FABC for a more vibrant church at the service of the people of Asia. We hope that FABC 50 will be a stepping stone to help us as the church in Asia rethink our commitment in relationship to mission, to work, worship, and to pastoral strategies. And as we move towards a new phase, prepare a future full of hope and joy amid chaos and uncertainty, a future of peace and harmony and reconciliation, we give thanks to our triune God for having guided our steps, and we pray for the Holy Spirit's continued unerring guidance. My dear people, I humbly ask you to keep praying for us and for the success of FABC 50. Do recite the special FABC prayer at all Sunday Masses till the 30th of October 2022. And do also celebrate with us by joyfully joining us in singing the Song of Asia. May Mary, our Mother, the Queen of Heaven, intercede for Asia and protect Asia. God bless each and every one of us. Thank you. We are now invited to listen to the Song of Asia through MV composed by Father Carlos Manuel Marcello of Archdiocese of Manila, the Philippines, in the occasion of the 50th anniversary of FABC. The song depicts an image of diversity of Asian people and how God brought us together. So, as Asian people be can become gifts to each other, we are all invited to be salt and light for all, to serve our brothers and sisters, and to become one family. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Song of Asia.
The Song of Asia. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is indeed a blessing to our congregation today as we receive the message from His Holiness the Pope. The Apostolic Nuncio to Thailand, Archbishop Paul Chang In Nam, will now read the message from His Holiness Pope Francis on the occasion of the inauguration of FABC's 50th anniversary. Your Excellency. Message of the Holy Father. To my venerable brother, Cardinal Charles Maung Bo, 
Archbishop of Yangon, President of the Federation of Asian Bishops' Conferences. As the Federation of Asian Bishops' Conferences marks the 50th anniversary of its establishment and inaugurates a season of spiritual preparation for the celebration of its first general conference in October next, I send warm greetings and the prayerful good wishes to you, your brother bishops, and all taking part in this significant ecclesial event. It is my hope that the FABC 50 General Conference will renew the churches in Asia in fraternal communion and in missionary zeal for the spread of the gospel among the richly diverse peoples, cultures, and the social realities of the vast Asian continent. The theme chosen for the General Conference, journeying together as the peoples of Asia, and they went a different way, is most fitting within the broader context of the synodal path of listening, dialogue, and discernment undertaken by the Universal Church in these years of preparation for the next ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops. I pray that the deliberations of the General Conference will enable your local churches to develop within the polyhedric unity of the people of God, creatively different ways to proclaim the joy of the gospel, to form new generations of missionary disciples, and to labor for the extension of Christ's kingdom of universal holiness, justice, and peace. With these sentiments, I invoke upon the forthcoming assembly a rich outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, commending you, your brother bishops, and all those entrusted to your pastoral care to the prayers of Mary, Mother of the Church, I cordially send my blessing as a pledge of wisdom, grace, and the peace in the Lord. From the Vatican, 5th of June, 2022, signed by Pope Francis. We now invite all of you to pray together in the Litany of the Saints for Asia for the blessing of God to the peoples of Asia. And we would like to invite Cardinal Francis Xavier Grengsak Govitwanit to lead the Litany of the Saint for Asia. Your Reminence. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on the occasions of this inauguration of the FABC 50 General Conference, which take place 
in the shrines of blessed Nicholas Bunkert Kit Bambrung of the Archdiocese of Bangkok, I would like to invite all of you to raise your voice to our God. We Christians believe in God, who is love. One God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the source of all communion, communion within the church here on earth, together with our brothers and sisters who have won the victory of this life on earth, or who are now during their purification, and we who are now fighting the war against secularism and evils in this present time. We Christians believe in the communion of saints, the saints of local church the blesses, the saints, those whom the universal church has approved that their holiness, so their lives can be the true witness for all of us and many, many more uncountable of our brothers and sisters who have left this life and are now in the bosoms of God, who loved them so much, and they too have loved Him in return. They all together with Mother Mary and of our parents above. Please rise. Let us now sing so loud our litany of praising to them all. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. God the Father of heaven. God the Son Redeemer of the the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one God, Holy Mary, Mother of God, Saints Michael, Gabriel, and Sin Kuria 
Maria Consilis Chavara.
Please remain standing to pray together the prayer of FABC 50th General Conference to be led by Bishop Alvin Rona da Silva, Your Excellency. My dear friends, I invite you to pray with me for FABC 50 General Conference all together. Blessed are you, Father, who in your great love sent your only begotten Son to reconcile us to you and to one another by his passion, death, and resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank and praise you for the birth of FABC over 50 years ago by divine providence and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, bishops from Asia met and formed the FABC. May the FABC continue to be steadfast in its mission of love and service. For your beloved people in this vast continent of Asia, help us to surmount the challenges that threaten the stability of our families, the dreams of our youth, the integrity of our environment, and the harmony among peoples, cultures, and religions. Through the intercession and motherly protection of Mary, Mother of the Church, the star of the new evangelization, may this occasion of the 50th anniversary celebration of FABC be a propitious time to discern and undertake new pathways for genuine renewal in our mission of making the gospel a life and life-giving for the poor, deprived, and the marginalized, for the displaced and the migrants, and for Mother Earth who groans with wounds of exploitation. We pray this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We remain standing to observe the next agenda of this ceremony. With this, I'd like to invite all of you to witness the beginning of the celebration of FABC 50th anniversary. We would now invite Cardinal Charles Mombo Cardinal Oswald Grazia and Cardinal Francis Savia Griengsak Govitwanit to strike the gong together. Striking of the gong symbolizes the announcement of good news for everyone to recognize. Your remnants. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
The principal celebrant, together with the bishops on the altar, will now take the photograph opportunity. May we usher the principal celebrant on the center stage for the photograph opportunity. ขอกราบเรียนเชิญพระคุณเจ้าประธานในพิธีตรงกลางพระแท่นร่วมกับพระคุณเจ้าบนเวทีโดนพระแท่นบูชาครับ As the photograph opportunity is taking place now, we now conclude the opening ceremony of the 50th FABC General Conference, Journey Together as Peoples of Asia. The conference will take place from October 12th to October 30th this year. We hope you continue to observe and participate if not in person, then in pray. Then, Pucham Tang Ban, the crab, nay, canani, gan, tai, tot, pity, bird, gan, chalong, crop, has it be, Sahapan, Sapa, Sankara, and Asia, said Sin Lung Lao, Pom Korean, Chen, Pinong, they did tam, cow, con, gan, prachum, Sahapan, Sapa, Sankara, and Asia, dieti, udom, san, let chong tang, 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 con, su, monchon, Catholic, prate, tai, crab. การประชุมสหพันธ์สภาพระสังฆราชแห่งเอเชียจะจัดขึ้นในประเทศไทยตั้งแต่วันที่12ถึง30ตุลาคมศกนี้ในโปรดติดตามและก็โปรดภาวนาให้กับบรรดาพระสังฆราชแห่งเอเชียครับ Please rise to send off the celebrant. The ceremony now concludes. Please enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you and be at peace. Suddenly shine.